All right, out on the range today with the WVP Jack. Hopefully you watched the unboxing video of this rifle. Um, the only thing that sucked on it out of the box is pistol grip. The uh, piece of junk, black plastic things all jagged and small. And we fixed that with a Polish Bakelite fatty from uh, Arms of America. Um, $30. This one, I was thought I might have to refurnish, refinish it when I got it. This one's beautiful. It's got some wear marks on it, but it looks good. Um, other modifications since the unboxing video. Uh, Arsenal SM13 top rail, or side mounted rail. Aimpoint Pro in a low ring. RS Regulate BM1 rail and a uh, old school TLR1. Uh, there's some thoughts as to whether or not the TLR1 will survive being uh, on an AK barrel with all that heat. I guess we'll find out though. So we're gonna let it rip and give it a shot. Clear. Very smooth shooting rifle. Um, the only thought I have on the RS Regulate mount on this, uh, on the jack in particular is the side rail on the WVP, WBP jack is a little bit thicker than typical AKM mount. So it's offset to the left just a little bit. This is not an issue. Zero the rifle at your range, in my case 25 yards, and uh, you might be a little bit to the right after it crosses over. But in the accuracy level of an AKM out to 300 yards, you're probably not going to know the difference. All right, so we're going to shoot this again at 50 yards. I'm going to try my best to be accurate at this point. Um, real quick, though, I do wanted to demonstrate the SM13 mount before we start. So there's the mount right here. There's a metal lever here, stamp, steel, and then mounts aluminum. There's a steel block that's screwed in right here, and then the clamp on the inside, that clamp and the bolt and the castle nut are all steel. There's a little bit of wear on the aluminum right here and right here on the mount, but it otherwise looks good. So that's, I cranked, I tightened down that castle nut and it seems like it's nice and snug now. So we'll see. Super easy to put back on. I just like to make sure it's all the way tight forward as I do it. Right there. And there's no wobble or anything like that. I'll take some close-up photos of the wear on the mount and then put them in the video as well. Now we're going to move out to 50 and shoot it. So you can see we're a little bit high into the right, 50 yards, 10 shot group, five shot groups are bullshit. But I'm overall, I'm happy with that. It's it, the, the mount is not wandering. I am going to adjust the windage on the aim point to the uh, left. Um, yeah, we'll do, I'll do that real quick and we'll fire another group.
right, there's another 10 shots, 50 yards. Um, just again, quick to point out, the aim point zeroed at 25. That's why we're high. Uh, 762 has a pretty arching trajectory when zeroed at 25, which is good. Uh, Soviet method of aiming, aim for the belt line, and you'll hit him out to 300 without any side adjustment. So I'm happy with the windage on this now. It's centered at 50. I'm not going to touch it until we get an opportunity to shoot at at least 100. I'm hoping for 150 to 200. And if it looks like it's a little bit off, I might adjust it again. Again, though, I don't know that I'll see the difference when you have a, a huge group. I would say she's grouping pretty good, though. You know, all, all things can consider with the idiot behind the trigger here running it. I'm sure somebody that wasn't the size of Gigantor with the, Wash with the Warsaw Pack stock could uh, do better than I could. Rifle's probably capable of more, but um, yeah. So we're back in the garage. A few days post shooting here. Um, rifle now has a total of about 250, 300 rounds through it at this point. My range sessions tend to not be a whole lot of rounds. I like to shoot a few reloads and everything else with uh, five to 10 rounds in the magazines to practice manipulation of the rifle versus just shooting rounds into trash. Um, so we're gonna talk about a few things post range trip. First, we're gonna make sure weapon's clear. Rifles are always loaded, especially one like this. Rifle's clear. All right, so I mentioned in the video some wear on the SM13. I think it's pretty superficial. In that the port, the part where it showed the wear was post, uh, I was testing the return to zero of the mount, putting it on and off a few times. I did have to adjust the mount after after zeroing the rifle, and uh, uh, shooting that uh, return to zero test on it. So we'll pop the mount off real quick, take a quick look at it here. So you can kind of see. Right about there, just a little bit of wear on anodizing. Honestly, I don't think that's a problem at all. Uh, the part that actually clamps is this. This is steel, and it engages right here on the on the rifle itself. Um, when you close the lever here, that steel block cams down and engages it. When you slide the mount on, it stops against this piece right here on the back, and then this cams in and locks it into place. Uh, so I don't, I don't see that wear causing me any issues. Um, Return to zero on the mount seems pretty good. When I returned to the video I took while testing the return to zero, I fired five shots, took it off, put it back on, fired five shots, did it repeated for an entire 30 round magazine. And uh, yeah, it, pretty much the groups remained centered on that six inch target. If the uh, video had turned out, I'd share it. <laughs> But for some reason, it looks like it was filmed in 2005, so I have no idea what happened with my phone on that video. Um, so now we got this off. Just take another good look at this rifle here. It's a gorgeous rifle. I'm very happy with it. Not a single issue other than one of my old crappy surplus magazines that's probably spent some time fighting in the Balkans or Middle East somewhere before it came over here with Sportsman's Guide around 2005, 2006. Uh, that magazine, just, it would not feed for some reason. Uh, the new production Bulgarian, new, uh, new old stock Polish, Arsenal Circle 10, AC Unity, um, those have all been great. I really personally prefer these Arsenal Circle 10s. They're expensive, but... Um, they are reasonably light, steel reinforced. Figure with a full combat load of seven magazines, you're saving almost a pound and a half over a set of steels. So that's good. Um, yeah, there's no unusual wear or anything on this um, at all. I mean, there's a little bit of paint chipping right here, but that's going to happen with an AK and with the ejection it's got going on. The paint on the barrel. It's holding up good. Um, I know with arsenals in particular, when you start bumping a bunch of rounds through them fast, the, the paint turn, tends to turn this weird shade of brown. That's not happening with the WVP at all. Uh, 
you can see, hopefully that shows up. Front sight is perfectly centered. I did not have to mess with that at all from the factory. Um, I think they zeroed it before they shipped it. There's an indicator of a sight tool being used on it at some point on the sight drum. Um, so I, I'm fairly certain this came zeroed. I had to adjust the elevation because I'm using a 25 yard zero with a 200 meter setting on the rear sight. Um, I think it's Tactical Rifleman mentioned that zero and, and it seems to work pretty good from what I can tell. Um, pop the top cover off, just take a quick look at the insides here. Again, 300 rounds, 250, 300 rounds, not a big amount for an AK. I've got a, a lot of ammo I intend to shoot through it, it's just having the time. So we can look in here and see the uh, hammer face looks good and there's no peening or wear on it at all. Just some finish wear, which is normal. Bolt group. There's the thing everybody wants to see. Carrier tail. Carrier tail looks really good. I mean, it <laughs> looks brand new, actually, the same as it was when I took it out. That's the advantage of using a uh, European fire control group. Um, it's not going to smash the, the tail on the bolt carrier like a Tapco G2, ALG. Um, and I, I, the Century Rack 1, I think, is also prone to that. Not 100% certain, but I know the Tapco G2 and the ALG will both smash the hell out of the tail of your bolt carrier. And for that reason alone, I would not recommend either trigger. Um, let's see here. So there's no weird wear on the locking lugs at all. Um, bolt looks really, really good. I mean, every bit of white you see is the finish wearing off. There's no chips, there's no gouging, there's no peening, nothing of that nature. From the unboxing video, remember the piston was fairly snug. It's loosened up. It's pretty typical AKM now at this point. Got that old wobble to it. Um, you can really see now the rivet that Atlantic, arm, uh, Atlantic Firearms put in when they installed the US made piston in this. That's how it's importable. US made piston allows them to import it um, into the US, or not to import it, but to sell it in this configuration. I did add the uh, the Polish uh, Bakelite on here. Got that from Arms of America. Uh, Ar you know, this pistol grip was a surprise. It was a good one. Arms of America's website shows a lot of really gnarly looking pistol grips in their pictures of what, a, what you might receive. <laughs> and then I got, uh, got this guy here that <laughs> looks practically new except for some wear down here on the bottom of the grip. Um, mag wall and everything looks good. I don't have the ability to take good close-ups of everything, but there's no peening, no wear on the trunnions at all. I mean, if I were to give this thing a detailed scrubbing and strip all the oil out of it, um, other than the finish where you would think it was still brand new, I'm very impressed with it so far. And I have high expectations that it will continue. Um, I think right now in 2023, the WVP Jack is the uh, import AK if you want a nice rifle. If you just want to mag dump in the trash and don't care about the fit and finish of the rifle but want something that'll run, Wasser 10, absolutely, it's cheaper. Um, but if you want a really nicely finished rifle that is guaranteed to be straight out of the box and not have canted sights or crappy finish or anything like that, uh, WVP by far um you know just a couple other things modifications i've done to it i didn't point out in the range video this has got the bfg sling on it i like this a lot i think it presents a good value it comes with this loop on the end here that allows it to adapt to the uh standard akm sling loop that's integrated in the handguard retainer what's really nice is you can see that it doesn't get in the way of the tlr1 at all um and if you're running the rifle, uh, the rocker switches and the TL1 are really uh, a good setup on an AK in this position, right? You can click it on for constant on, or you can rotate it out for momentary. And it's really intuitive. I think it's it gives you the option of a sight. It does give some splash on the front sight base a little bit, um, but it I 
actually, if you're shooting just irons, it's kind of nice because it lights up that front side enough to where you can put it on your target. Um, yeah, overall, great rifle. Would highly recommend.